Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for Simon Says Stamp. Today we're going to be doing some copa coloring and some inlay die cutting but kind of a different way. We're going to be working with even more spring flowers, the heart mandala die, and then I showed you the happy birthday die but I actually didn't end up using it. I ended up using the emphatic stamp set. So I'm working on Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock here and I'm just going to stamp out all of my floral images. Um, I wasn't, <laughs> I was like so sidetracked that I didn't even pay attention to the fact that my leaves didn't pick up the first time around. Anyway, um, I'm stamping an intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp because it is Copic safe and that is going to be the medium that I'm using today to color these little guys up. I cannot believe that I have owned this stamp set now for a few months and I have not colored any of these flowers yet. Um, it's a crime, I'm pretty sure, because uh, I just, I love them so much. All of those sets, the spring flowers, um, more spring flowers, even more spring flowers, they're all just really great ones. And so here I was kind of being lazy and eventually I did have to stand up out of my chair to give the middle of the largest flower good pressure um, because I wasn't getting a good image and it's just because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. So originally when I started, um, sat down to start making this card I thought my background was going to be blue and so I thought that some bright yellow flowers would be really pretty with that. I toured around with doing maybe like an orangish red um, and then ultimately I settled on the yellow because I don't normally gravitate toward yellow and I thought well that would be something different. Um, that's not I didn't end up obviously going blue you saw the <laughs> the background but um we'll just work through the process so here basically what I'm doing is I'm starting with my lightest color I'm using just the tip of the marker and I'm using flicking motions to add in my color to create a more round appearance for my flower I'm adding shading to the base of the petals but I'm also adding some shading to the tip of the petals so that my highlight will be in the center now you'll notice that the bottom two on this particular flower, the bottom two petals are curled up. So there's going to be shadows not, not only at the base, but also where it's curling over. And I think a lot of times people kind of struggle with this because they want their petals to be, um, I guess the color that they picked. So I want this to be yellow. My shadow colors are a YR24 and an E99 which means that they're more brown. Um, and since I want my, my petals to be yellow, sometimes I struggle with adding in the shadows because I do want them to look yellow. However, adding in those darker colors is how you're gonna get your depth. Um, so if you're looking at your, your coloring and you're like, it's so flat, you need to add some darker colors. I know that they can be a little bit scary, I do. Um, but even if it's just a line, you don't have to add a ton, but just enough to give it a little bit of contrast. So I worked all the way out to the darkest color and now I'm going back in towards the lightest. I prefer to stretch out my color when I go back over it. So the first time I'm pretty conservative with where I put it. The second time I stretch it out a little bit more. The key to this particular color combination with using those browns as um, the shadow colors and still making it look yellow is even though the colors are darker, when you're doing your like Y08 or your Y02, still go over those darker colors. It's going, Copics are transparent, so it's going to add some brightness and it will um, help to, I guess, kind of soften out that brown color. So the petals on the outside are curled up, so they're going to have shadows at the bottoms and it'll be lightest on the tips. For the center of the flower, I think it's one, for me, like coloring yellow flowers, I always think, like, what if I color the flower yellow, then what am I going to do the center? Typically, I, I go for brown. That's just what works for me. And then I filled the whole thing in with the lightest color. And then I'm just doing um, dots kind of around the edge. The darkest color I left really out on the edge. And that, again, is going to help give it that more dimension. And then just same thing as always. Lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. Moving on to these flowers. Now, remember, I thought my background was going to be blue. So I thought like some super bright yellow green flowers would be really pretty. It's pretty on the gray too, but um, this was just my thought process. So I filled them all in with my lightest green. And then we're 
again with the with the shading. So there's a lot of these leaves have parts that are curled over. So you're going to have some, again, some darker areas. And then also anytime you have an object laying on top of another object, they call these, um, some people refer to them as cast shadows. So if your leaf is laying on top of another leaf, the leaf that appears to be on the bottom is going to be darker, guys. It, it just, it is. And um, don't worry so much about everything being so matchy-matchy. And that is a struggle for me as well, because I do want them to look, you know, similar and like they go together. Um, but to get that dimension in real life, things aren't matchy-matchy, except for my nail polish and my outfit to work, because I have a real problem. Um, but so like this one here, where it's underneath two petals, that one is definitely going to be darker than all of the other um, leaves. Did I say petals? I did say petals. I mean leaves. Um, so just going through and, you know, kind of building up those um, shadows, you also to kind of have some separation, when one is on top of the other, the one that's on top, if you can try to leave a lighter edge um, sitting on top, so that way it really pushes the leaf that you have in the background to the back. So you have that brightness up front, darkness in the back. An easy way to do this, if you are a person who has reservations about adding your darkest color, pick your color blend, whatever that is. If you're a three marker person, a, a, a two marker person, four like me, whatever you got going on. And then go into your image and like, especially with this flower, because it is so large um, and there's so many layers, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. And I get that because it can be for me as well. So what you can do is go in with your darkest color and just start mapping out your shadows. So just put in that darkest color where one object is sitting on top of another. That's it. Don't do any flicking. Don't do any technique. Don't do any of that until you're comfortable with how, where your shadows are. Map the whole thing out. And then you can start um, kind of blending it out as you go. So I did this um, kind of as like a, a teaching flower. Um, but eventually I will go back in just for me personally, I will go back in and, and do the flicking for the, for the color so that it kind of blends and everything looks, um, the same because these are all going on a card together. I didn't want one to be colored differently, but I wanted you to see that even if you don't do any of the flicking, even if you, um, you know, you just do that one little line of color, you can still get really great dimension, um, and then just, you know, and that might be your style and that's totally fine. My style is different. Everybody, that's the beauty of the crafting um, industry is everybody's kind of doing different things and doing it their own way. And I love, love, love when when I can or when other people can, you guys can make things your own um, so that when somebody sees it, they can be like, oh, that's a Kelly card or somebody see your, like that's, that's uh, Karen's card. Like to just be able to see that and pick out those things that are yours. So you can see up at the top, it is substantially darker now because I went back in and did my own thing. I wanted to add some white gel pen highlights to the center of the flowers um, just to add in that detail. And then I like to outline all of my images. So I'm using an EK Success journaling pen to do that. I just feel like um, it makes those colors look a little bit bolder and it's really clean and I like that look. These do have dyes. Um, so if you're you're into the look of dyes, I encourage you to check those out. I wanted to fussy cut them because I thought that I was going to have a blue, like a busier blue background. That's not what I did at all, guys. I didn't do it at all. Um, so I am fussy cutting them. I'm right hand dominant. So I'm going to hold my scissors in my right hand. I'm going to move my paper with my left hand so that that gives me a super smooth cut. Um, but if you don't get a super smooth cut, don't worry. There's kind of like a trick for it, which I'm going to show you here. Um, you can use a, and you want to use a water-based, not an alcohol. If you use an alcohol-based marker, it's going to bleed into your image and you're going to be sad, sad. Um, so I'm just going around and using that black marker to color in the edges and that will help give it a smoother look. Here is where I change my background. So I have this um, score tape, be creative tape, 
it's kind of all the same deal. And mine is, I think, two inches. I think mine's two inches wide. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm covering the entire back. Here's why. What I really wanted to do with the heart mandala die was emboss it in the background. Um, well, not what I originally wanted to do. Originally, I like watercolored some glitter paper, honest. Um, but then I was switching it up and I really wanted to emboss it because the glitter paper was just a little bit too much for me. I couldn't find my embossing pad. And I was like, I still, I wanted, like, this is the idea that I have. I want to be able to do it. So I knew from previous incidences, and this is why we try everything, try all the things, don't give up on it. I knew from previous incidences with this score tape that my dies would not cut completely through the backing paper. So that's what I did. I covered the whole thing in this, and then I knew it would keep it together. Now, I toyed around with the idea of taking the, the tape off, but I was very, very nervous that it cut through the tape and not the backing paper. And this is such an intricate die. There's a 0% chance I was sitting here putting back in all of those pieces. So I just glued it down to my card base with the backing paper right on it. That's what I did. Um, and I didn't have any issues. I mean, it's completely hidden because it's glued to the card base. And then once I had that down, I just popped my die off and then everything's together. And it looks amazing. This is such a, a, a beautiful die. Um, I did have a couple of pieces up at the top and bottom. You'll see just um, the little teeny tiny pieces. I just popped them out with my craft pick and then put them back into place. And I had no problem. It took me maybe 30 seconds to just go ahead and do that. I really love how, um, how it looks because... It's very detailed and very intricate, but because it's like that tone on tone where it's the same gray, it doesn't distract away from the flowers. Here, I'm going to emboss my sentiment. And so I'm using my um, Simon Says Stamp grid paper that I keep on my desk to line that up on a block that has uh, the lines on it. So it's super simple to line up. I am treating my black, um, em or black embossing powder. What am I even saying? Woo, stay with me, guys. Um, my black cardstock with the uh, Inkity Kadoo embossing bag, and then I'm stamping in Versamark ink. This particular sentiment says, I am just so proud of you. And um, I think that there's a lot of people out there doing really uh, brave things and really scary things for them. There's also a lot of people out there who have put their mind to their, their, uh, you know, their dreams, their goals, their aspirations, and they are, you know, trying or actually accomplishing those things. And I think that far too often we forget to tell people how proud we are of them, not just of their accomplishments, but also of their efforts. And so I have a, um, a craft friend who's really just trying to, to put herself out there. Um, and I am incredibly proud of her. She is being, immensely immensely brave right now and so I thought that this would be a card that I could send to her. So I glued down the leaves flat and then I am going to pop up my flowers on top of that just using the 3M scotch foam tape. I have the big daddy roll because I put this stuff on everything that isn't a one layer card. I mean if it's not one layer I'm, I'm just popping up all the things. I don't usually layer just paper very often. So here I put the one flower down and I should have waited until I tucked the um, the side view flower behind. I just kind of pried it up. It ended up being fine. No big deal. Um, I did glue the stem down flat so it would tuck behind my flower. And also I didn't want to cut like the world's tiniest pieces of scotch foam tape. Um, so and then I'm going to pop up the actual bloom part. Uh, and that was good. That just, it tucked right in and I was happy with the way that it looked. I did cut the sentiment into two little like labels so it would fit better on the card. Um, and then I popped those up as well. I'm using just a couple of clear sequins here to kind of fill in that space and accent the sentiment. So putting that down with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue, and then I like to fill those in with uh, glossy accents just so I know that they're really adhered down. Um, and then some, just some glitter pen right on top, some clear glitter pen because I love all the glitter things. 
So that's it. That's the whole card. So I hope maybe you will give that a try or something like it and see uh, if that works for you. Don't be afraid of the dark colors. Dark colors are your friends. Okay, that's it. I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.